Hi, everybody. I'm Ann Moody. I'm an implementation specialist at Justice Tracks. Um, I'm going to get into what Justice Tracks does in just a little bit, but we're primarily a crime lab software company, forensic software company. So just show of hands, how many of you guys are either law enforcement, crime lab, medical examiner? <clears throat> oh, wow. Awesome. How many of you are Justice Tracks customers? Cool. Well, I know we have at least a couple here that are both Qualtrics and LIMS Plus uh, users. So we recognize a need for a streamlined approach for integrating the two products. Most of our customers are using Qualtrics for quality management purposes, and then they've got LIMS Plus, which is used for analytical case management, things like that. Um, obviously, m many of the, much of the information that's in LIMS Plus is going to be used somehow in a Qualtrics workflow, so a nonconformity, a corrective action, um, just monitoring courtroom testimony, something like that. So we wanted to, um, to come up with a solution that allows the two products to talk to one another so that you're not redundantly entering information that's already contained in both products. All right. <clears throat> so you guys are all Qualtrics users, um, and, and we know what Qualtrics can do for us. So it's good at process management, document control, um, managing the training of your employees. We actually at Justice Tracks began using Qualtrics about three years ago. So I'm a Qualtrics end user. I've got a couple of sidekicks here with me uh, this week. One of them is a Qualtrics co-administrator, and the other is a product manager for LIMS Plus. So they've got, uh, or between the three of us, we've got a lot of expertise in the integration. But yes, we did decide to start using Qualtrics about three years ago. <laughs> and this is a little statement from, from Simon Key, our CEO. Currently, we have um, put into place the use of document control, so we keep our standard operating procedures for our internal quality management system in Qualtrics. We also use it for managing the training of our staff um, and then our product documentation, so we can go in any time we need to provide product documentation to a customer. Everything is readily available, and it's, and it's, been, it's been a great tool for us internally. <coughs> So like Simon says, we are at Justice Tracks, an ISO 9001-2015 certified company. Um, and that is just a software compliance um, sort of accreditation. We also about, I think in 2018, achieved ISO 27001-2013 for information security management. So we, are, we, we manage our own accreditations um, for software. But our customers are also, or have many accreditation bodies that they adhere to. So ISO 17025, um, ASCLAD Lab, ANAB, National Association of Medical Examiners. So they are using Qualtrics to achieve the compliance with their accreditation bodies. A little bit about um, Justice Tracks. We started in 1995. Um, and as you can see here, we have 10 forensic scientists on staff. So collectively, we have 135 plus years of forensic experience. I actually started my um, career at GBI in death investigation in the medical examiner's office. And then the ladies here with us, um, one is a former toxicologist, one's a forensic biologist. And so they moved even out of customer care into other areas of the company, quality management, product management. Um, and then most of the customer care employees, <coughs> we have a um, forensic biologist on staff, former forensic chemist, latent print examiners. So we truly are a forensic company that is owned and managed by forensic scientists. Um, one of the things that Jeff said this morning was um, coming up with a purpose for your company. And I feel like at Justice Tracks, because we once were forensic scientists, we are able to, um, I guess, easily recognize the mission of our customers and it's made us very successful. <coughs> so for those of you who don't know what LIMS Plus is, it is our flagship product. At Justice Tracks, we have several products. Um, this is our main one. It is used for case management. It is used for evidence tracking and entering analytical results. We can report from it. I'm gonna do a brief demonstration of it so that you have a good understanding of it. Um, because my, my goal here in the next few minutes is just to give you guys an understanding or to highlight the, the integration, um, some of the features of the integration, and then to give you some use case scenarios. At Justice Tracks, we also have other products. We have a chemical inventory management system. 
We have a LIMS Plus DNA. We have um, a portal application that's used for allowing our customers to uh, um, attain reports that were generated in LIMS Plus. Um, we have a Chainlinks product for property inventory, property management for our police um, forces. But LIMS Plus, again, is our flagship product, and we have two versions of it. Currently, Qualtrics integrates with our LIMS Plus version 5. And we have Massachusetts State Police here, and I think maybe Pinellas County, who are both LIMS Plus version 5 users. And it is the, um, the application that I will demonstrate. Both LIMS Plus version 3 and version 5 are case management software. And there's a lot of um, overlapping features to both of them, but there's also a, a, a little bit of customization that you'll see in LIMS Plus version 5 in a minute. <clears throat> and again, our customers are crime labs throughout the world. Um, we have national, we have state level crime labs, we have local. We also have law enforcement agencies that are our customers as well as medical examiner's offices. And then we have a couple of other, um, not necessarily forensic, I guess NOAA, National uh, Oceanic Atmospheric Association, <laughs> and Target, Target's uh, risk management. So they're our customers as well, and they also use LIMS Plus. All right, so I'm gonna um, exit this uh, PowerPoint for a moment. Oh, wrong mouse here. And let's take a look at LIMS Plus. All right, so when we first log into LIMS, <clears throat> we have a dashboard. It is unique to each user, so every user won't have the same. Um, profile picture and, and name here. Um, so these are the cases that I've most recently accessed. Um, I mentioned that we use LIMS Plus for analytical results. So um, in forensic analysis, we might get assigned to a request for a service that is being performed by our lab. So this will give us direct access to any requests that have been assigned to me. Um, and then most of our um, services will also require some sort of review process by our peers. So a technical or an administrative review, if I'm assigned to any of those, I can directly access them from here as well. Um, and again, there's a lot of bells and whistles in LEMS Plus V5 that I'm not going to necessarily go over. I just want to hit the high notes and especially give you guys a kind of a, a background understanding of how it operates so that you have a better understanding of how the integration is so useful. <laughs> so I'm just going to create a case. The first thing that we might do as a LEMS Plus user is specify our investigating agency. So we are the crime lab, but we've got our own customers. And those customers might have their own internal case number. And that's our investigating agency. You may have more than one agency on your case. So maybe Bridgeport Police Department is the primary investigating agency, but we also need to include the DA's office or maybe the FBI is involved or whatever. So you can add as many <laughs> um, agencies to your case as you need to. I'm going to get my case number, and then we'll see that my LIMS Plus case number is visible in the top left corner, and my primary investigating agency's case number is here in the middle. So we can always search by any of those case numbers. Um, we've got a lot of information here on our first little tab. It's really just kind of an overview of our case. If we needed to, we can um, enter a case synopsis. If I can type. And we've got some other features. Anytime you see this thing here called a custom information section, this is something that's unique to LIMS Plus version 5. This is how we, um, our customers are able to uh, customize their own application to make it their own. So any, any additional fields that they might need to record, any additional information that's not inherent in the application, they have the ability to build um, drop down lists, check boxes, text boxes, etc. So again, we've got our agencies, they're all stored here on the one tab. I'll just go ahead with Bridgeport Police Department, um, but I do have the ability to add additional agencies. I might add um, the offense that's being investigated. <clears throat> And 
And again, we have, um, I don't know if you noticed that, but my custom information section appeared based on the offense that I selected. So you are able to build rules engines for when certain fields appear and make certain fields available to certain users and not others within your lab. Uh, let's see, oh goodness. What just happened? Uh oh, sorry y'all. Well, luckily my case was saved. Okay, so our individuals on the case. Um, we might enter our suspects. I'll go ahead and make um, Frank Beamer my suspect since we're here at Vitek. <clears throat> um, and we can enter um, witnesses, decedents, if we're, if we're a medical examiner office, and as much information about the individual as we need to. And these are all stored directly in the case. So we do have the ability to add um, crime scene information. So um, if we are a, uh, if we have internal staff members who routinely go out and investigate crime scenes and take crime scene photos, you can enter the scene information and add as much information as you need to down here as a custom information section. So I took GSR from Frank Beamer. And then we can add, as I mentioned, attachments, um, responder record, just, just specifying which m one of my staff members responded to the scene, which one processed the, the cash register versus the bathroom, I don't know, at the 7-Eleven. <clears throat> and then evidence, evidence tracking. So very, very important part of our application. Most of our crime labs will enter all of the evidence that is submitted by the investigating agencies um, on this evidence tab. So this evidence tab is going to include information um, regardless of the type of services that are being performed. So my crime scene guys go out, they take um, um, swabs, they take the weapon, they take latent prints, they take um, blood stain cuttings. So all of those will might be entered as evidence items and they're all stored here on the evidence tab. The, tra the chain of custody is tracked in the application and it can be viewed at any time. Um, and so we always know exactly where our evidence is. I'm just going to enter an item of evidence, again, just to, just to keep this kind of simple so that you get the idea. <clears throat> All right, so we'll, we'll have some clothing. It's sealed. And then I'm going to enter the chain of custody for my clothing. So this is that initial transfer of the, the bag of clothing into my lab. So January Jones is going to bring it to me, and she might sign for it. I don't know if I can write her name. <laughs> and then I can scan my own barcode so that I am confirming a secured transaction, that I am who I say I am by entering my PIN number. And then maybe I'll put this bag of clothing um, in, my, in my evidence vault. And anytime you see a yellow field, these are barcode fields, my chain of custody might continue. If I go ahead and save this, um, this item, then I can always perform other transfers. Obviously, I will perform, perform subsequent transfers throughout the lab and maybe even back to the investigating um, agency later. I'm going to uncheck print receipts. I don't have receipts configured for my system currently, but um, we, I, you are able to generate a document that I could give back to January Jones so that she has a record um, that she brought me that bag of clothing. And now my bag of clothing is here and again at any time I can view the chain of custody for that item <laughs> and it'll show me the date, time, and the, the folks that were involved. So later on if I needed to take this bag of clothing in addition to other bags of clothing and give it to um, one of my latent print examiners I can perform large quantity evidence transfers, um, not within a specific case, but it does allow you to take items from multiple cases and perform the transfers together. Investigations, this uh, feature is used mostly by our medical examiner's offices for 
um, recording initial um, death calls and then subsequent information that's, that's generated in the course of a death investigation and at date and time stamps it. Um, our communication log, <laughs> this allows you to add um, correspondence. So if you needed to specify that you spoke with January Jones and told her that the evidence or that the, the an analysis might be late, we can record that here as well. So hopefully you're getting the idea that there's a lot of areas in our case that might be pertinent to something that you're, that you're recording in Qualtrics. So our request, this is our request for um, services performed by our lab. And again, we might have a request for a latent print analysis for forensic biology, firearms, um, you name it. So all of those might be recorded <clears throat> here on my request tab and I can have as many requests as I need. <clears throat> So the first thing that we do is we add our, um, our requesting agency representative. So maybe uh, Officer Page is the one who's actually requesting a latent print exam from me. And then I'll go ahead and assign this to myself. And then I've got a few other fields that I might use, some notes fields, et cetera. Down here, I'm able to relate um, the suspect, for example, to my request, the items of evidence that I'm actually analyzing. So if I had hundreds of evidence items on my case and I'm only interested in selecting the ones that I'm, that I'm um, analyzing for latent prints at this step. So here's my latent print request. Once it's added, there are several things that I can do. So notice here that we do um, have something called an SOP feature in LIMS Plus. Um, most of our customers, again, are using Qualtrics for their SOPs, but we'll talk a little bit in the, um, at, towards the end of the, the presentation about some future plans for the integration. So the next thing I might do as an analyst is <coughs> enter my results. The results forms are completely customizable. I'm, we don't, I mean, we, we provide some examples, but for the most part, this is where our customers create what is needed for our analysts to record their results. So for me, I'm just gonna say that I took a fingerprint. All I've got is a simple drop down list and then a large text box where I can say that um, no prints of value found. And once my results are entered, the next step in my workflow, um, I've got a lot of, you've got a lot of, um, I guess, workflow customization here. So I may have some additional uh, results that I need to add. I may um, need to send an email to somebody. So we do have an automated workflow um, engine within LIMS Plus, but I just built something super simple to get you guys the idea. I'm gonna draft complete this request, and this is essentially saying that I am finished with my results and I'm ready for it to move on to the review process. So the next step might be a technical review. Um, LIMS Plus will not allow you to tech review your own work. I would need to log in as another user, perform the tech review, or you do have the ability to reject findings. So think about Qualtrics, and especially you guys who are in the forensic, forensic industry. Um, you might need the ability to link um, a, techni a technical review, for example, um, that where all of your documentation is being recorded in Qualtrics and link it back to a specific request. So with this integration, you should now be able to do that. So that's our requests. Again, you can upload attachments, associate documents and images in um, LIMS Plus. Um, and then we've got the ability to add case activities. <clears throat> One that comes to mind is recording court room testimony. So if you um, are subpoenaed, you can enter the the agency that you um, provided testimony for, and then who performed it and so on. <clears throat> We've also got a feature called Case Packet. Um, and I'm just mentioning these because future uh, hopes and dreams of the integration might, um, might involve these other areas of the application. <clears throat> so Case Packets allow you to bring documents, so reports, um, images, 
chain of custody evidence receipts and compile them into one large packet. Um, usually it's for the purposes of discovery. They're stored here on the case and they can be viewed at any time. There's other areas outside of a case, like for example, instrument maintenance. So you might record calibration of the instrument or if the instrument is taken out of service, you can enter that in LIMS Plus. Um, for our staff members, we have the ability to add uh, training records. So if you require, if you're required to attend annual training for your um, own certification, then you can keep record of those in LIMS Plus and they're stored with the staff record. Any questions about LIMS? I, and again, this is just a, a broad overview of the application. All right, so back to our PowerPoint. There we go. So what is our solution? Again, the idea is that our customers are using both products. How can we streamline this process so that our customers, so that the, the two applications talk to each other? Um, this will help to eliminate mistakes that are made by manual entry. You're entering something in LIMS Plus, it's per pertinent to something in Qualtrics, and you don't want to have to go back in and enter that case number. What happens if you accidentally transpose an, a number or something like that? So this eliminates that, um, it removes the risk and it eliminates the, the manual steps and removes the, uh, I guess, the risk for, for error. So how does the applications talk to one another? It's through the use of an API. And I don't know how many of you guys are technical here, but an API is an application programming interface. So we have a Qualtrics API that, is, that allows the communication between the two systems. <clears throat> Our API is considered RESTful. And again, for those of you who are technical, this just means that it's, uh, there's uniformity, addressability, connectedness, and stateless. So it's simply a way for the two applications to talk to one another. We open up a line of communication, we request some information, the information gets sent, and then that connection is closed. So the information might be just to retrieve a list, or it may mean update something, or it may mean add something. Once that is performed, the connection closes. It also requires a, a level of authentication. So we, uh, so we know who, that, that we're allowed to access both systems and allow them to communicate on our behalf. So how does this work? <clears throat> the integration is going to allow you to instantiate a workflow directly from within LIMS Plus. Once that workflow has been created, it's going to be searchable and it's going to be maintained. There's always going to be a link between those unless you remove that link. So this allows just a continuous quality improvement across the, both of the systems. And again, eliminate wasted effort, eliminate redundancy, and then um, and, I, and we're always looking for ways to improve our quality both of the integration, but you guys are looking to improve your own quality in, internally, so this hopefully will allow you to do that. <clears throat> Currently, the integration allows you to instantiate a workflow and link it to a case in LIMS, an evidence item in LIMS, or evidence items, or requests. So I showed you all of the various case entities. The, the requests, the evidence, and the cases are what are currently involved in the integration. Um, we'll talk a little bit about future plans, but for the most part, these are the main areas that our customers are going to need this integration. And even with, with um, like an instrument, if you needed to link something back to an instrument because it was taken out of service and used in the course of analysis, if we can link it back to a request where that instrument was um, specified as, as used in, a, in, a, in, a, in the analysis, then we can certainly link that request to Qualtrics. Um, and then once you've created that workflow, you're able to view it directly in LIMS Plus. So again, some use cases, um, <clears throat> corrective actions, preventive actions. Um, I mentioned a review process like a tech review. Um, if you needed to edit the chain of custody on evidence items or an item, you may need to record that information in Qualtrics. So now we can link it directly back to the evidence. 
So I just took a couple of examples of some of our accreditation statements from our various checklists of our customers. This one is a National Association of Medical Examiners um, checklist option. You can see here that it's requiring that our evidence is um, properly labeled, appropriately preserved. So let's say, for instance, that we found that there were specimens that, and they broke during transport. And we need to know that that occurred. And we've recorded that information in Qualtrics. Now we want to link it back to our evidence items in LIMS Plus, And the integration will allow you to do that. Um, <clears throat> this is an ISO 17025 accreditation standard. Um, just mentioning that the that corrective actions quality control um, is continually adhered to. So the use of the, the integration should allow you to to control that. Um, and if, if for some reason results were improperly reported, that would likely be a request um, centric integration. So you guys are going to get the PowerPoint um, that I'm presenting today in, in your handouts. And I did embed um, the, the, the integration itself, like a demonstration of the workflow in the, in the PowerPoint. But I want to go directly into the application and show you it from there. But just know if you ever wanted to go back and remember how it worked, you've got an embedded video. Let me just make sure I'm still logged into Qualtrics. What's going on here? Oh, phew. All right. So I've got my Qualtrics instance open, and I've got my LIMS Plus open. If we go to our Others tab here in LIMS Plus, we've got this thing here called Qualtrics Workflows. Oh, what's happening? Um, all right, one second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now. All right. Sorry, let me go back. All right, so I'm here on the Others tab in Lens Plus, and I've got this thing now called Qualtrics Workflows, and it'll only be present if you have the integration installed. Here on the left is a list. When I click on this drop down, the Qualtrics API is going to make a call to find all of the workflows that I have set up for use with the integration. You do have the ability to specify which ones you do and don't want to be integrated with LIMS Plus from the Qualtrics end. So if I select a workflow, I can also specify the person who initiated the workflow or the date and time of um, the entry if I needed to further filter my results. Once I've entered my filters and I click Apply Filter, the API is going to find all of the workflows that meet that criteria and display them. So here I've got the name of my workflow, um, my initiator. Uh, this was before we actually had, this is an ID, but now we actually have the name of the initiator. And over here on the right is our workflow ID. These are hyperlinks that will allow you go, to go directly to the workflow in Qualtrics. <clears throat> so I've opened my workflow in Qualtrics. This grid here is showing me all of the case numbers that were involved in that particular uh, workflow instance. If for some reason I needed to add a row, like add another case, I can do that. and then save it. Oh, I think it's actually, yes. When I do that, it will go back to those cases and, um, and link it, link them directly to the Qualtrics workflow. So this is once those workflows have been created. Um, so how do, how do they actually get created? Let's actually see what this looks like in a case and then I'm gonna build a work or create a workflow for, for you. So let's take a look at this case 170001. If I come back to this case, 
One of the things I didn't show you earlier is all the way to the far right, we now have a tab called Qualtrics. So if any areas of this case, whether it's the case itself, um, evidence items on the case, or requests on the case were involved or linked to any Qualtrics workflows, you would see those here from the case itself. So I can expand my node and see that I've got um, this particular case is linked to the, both this workflow and this one. These also are hyperlinks. So if I needed to take a look and say, what, what does that mean? You know, what exactly are we talking about in terms of our, our workflow that's related to this case? I can go directly to it using that link. So back to LIMS, if I needed to create a workflow for the first time, so let's say I've got several requests and the reagents were expired and I found out after the fact and I need to go and flag them because they were involved in a corrective action. How does that work? So if we come back to our Qualtrics work workflows outside of the case, because we might need to include multiple cases, I can use this add workflow button here to add my workflow. So I'm going to give it the name of my car. And then again, we currently we have the ability to link a workflow to either a case, evidence or requests, or you can do multiples. I'm just going to go ahead with the request for now. And when you set up the integration, you can, if you, for example, don't want your lab to um, Link, link it to evidence. You only want to use cases and requests. You can certainly do that. Um, the integration is a little bit customizable in that regard. <clears throat> so I'm just going to enter a wildcard value in my case number field. Click search. It's going to find all of my cases that start with 19-CL. Um, I've got several pages of them. If I go to the last page, I'll actually see the one I just created for you guys in, in the demonstration, and it was this case number 29. This select button, remember I this is going to be a request-centric workflow. So my select button allows me to select the requests <clears throat> that are on this case and add it. But maybe I've got multiple uh, case or other requests that also use that same expired reagent. So let's also add some requests from other cases as well. Maybe this latent prints service. And then we'll do one more. We'll go with our MSP requests. So now I've got three requests that are linked to my corrective action. When I finish, it's going to create that workflow instance. And then it should generate a Qualtrics workflow ID. Qualtrics workflow ID 2106 was successfully created. I say OK. I could actually do a filter and find that workflow from here. Um, let's actually take a look at the case I, I created a minute ago. 29. And if we go to our Qualtrics tab, we now see that it's linked to our latent prints request. And I can instantiate that workflow here, take a look at it. And this is probably more of what you're used to in terms of a Qualtrics workflow. So I've got my, my text box my lab information, my discipline, corrective actions that I'm taking. Um, and down here, it's showing me the case numbers and the request numbers that were involved in that. Does that make sense? You remember all this, Lori? <laughs> <laughs> Questions about any of that, or anything that you'd like to see again? Yes? So it only works from the tracks to call tracks. Can it work in the reverse, where a quality incident or corrective action workflow was started in call tracks and you know, as investigations go, it's not just one case, it's six, six, 16, I don't know how many cases. 
Uh, yeah, they come after the fact. So notice that we have this add row of option. So I can add um, another case. I don't know what's on this case. I'm just going to add the case number. Um, if I can remember my case number, 17, I think. Um, and then if I save that, it will, it, will, it will go back and link itself to that case as well. So it's searching the Justice Track database for that lab or that case number and link, it, link this workflow to that case number. So you mean when I click Save Changes, what's happening behind the scenes? Right. You want to explain that, Melissa? <laughs> yeah, not exactly like that. What um, the way the integration works is Justice Tracks reaches out to the Qualtrics API. So even though we add a Justice Tracks Limbs Plus case number in Qualtrics, when we are looking at Limbs Plus, it's actually going and pulling that information through the Qualtrics API from Qualtrics. And does that like constantly? Well, the API, every API call is made independently. So as soon as you look at a case, if you open that case in LIMS Plus, it's going to go out to the, the Qualtrics API and say, okay, give me a list of all of the um, relevant workflows that are linked to that case. So I'll just show you what she means. So again, I saved my change. I added that row down here and clicked save. So it's not happening then, but I'm on that case now. When I click the Qualtrics tab, if you notice, there's a kind of a slight delay. So it's going out there and it's trying to find all of the workflows that are associated with this case, and now it displays them. And that's the corrective action demo that I just created right here. Sorry, can I add one more question? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, because when you added these uh, at the row um, in the subform in the Qualtrics workflow, you only put in the case number, but you did not put a request number. So when you went back to Justice Track, it's filing the workflow under case. Now, if you went back and added a request number to that, will that move from case to request? That's so right. it will constantly mm -hmm. update itself with the information that you've added. So yes, I would have I would have had to have known a request that existed whenever I entered that, but I could have gone in <clears throat> to my workflow, to my grid, and entered 0002 space latent space prints, and it would have associated it with the latent prints request. Thank you. So yeah, that's what happens, I guess, when you do it backwards. Because <laughs> that, that does happen for sure. Any other questions on that? Yes? Um, earlier on when you were creating the case and there was an option for adding an attachment, for say, for example, you wanted to add an SOP, is that adding a physical document or a hyperlink? we're facing from Qualtrics? So our attachments tab is for physical documents. You're uploading image files, sometimes documents. Um, my attachments is actually not configured on this system or I would demonstrate it for you, but yes. Okay, so there's currently no way to um, put in a hyperlink to like a Qualtrics document with the, the document ID on the end? Does that make sense? Correct, yeah. Yeah, the, right now the integration between the two applications is exclusively for workflows, okay. not for documents. Okay, well, we, we have a different lens um, for environmental lab, but we're kind of battling with the same integration. Okay, so that kind of brings me to my next, uh, the next part of the presentation is kind of what's next. Um, again, this is instantiating workflows based on cases, requests, and evidence. Um, but things like that we would want to know, like what might be useful to you in the future. Any other questions on the, the integration or anything you guys wanted to see before I come back to this? Yes. I have to have more. Okay. Um, so at the end, you mentioned you could create a, you could call it a case packet. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would be compiled into like a PDF? Yes, it creates a large PDF document um, consisting of all of the files that you selected, okay. and you're able to specify the order in which they are generated. Okay. But it's one big packet. Not currently, um, but that's something that we would want to know about. So all of these ideas, these are these are these are great. This is something that we would want to that we would want to talk about. And that's actually um, potential next phases. So uh, for example, this is another ISO standard um, where we want to maintain our equipment, <coughs> so instruments. Again, I mentioned as a workaround, 
you can notice that we have all these drop downs. So we could go out there and create a drop down list of all of the instruments in our lab and then enter them in our results and then associate the request with a workflow currently. Um, but hopefully in the future, maybe we could, we could associate a workflow with an actual um, instrument because we do maintain those individually in Linux Plus. <clears throat> Um, I also mentioned activities. So activity tracking includes subpoena tracking. So if you wanted to monitor courtroom testimony, maybe that's a future next phase. Um, batch processing, staff records. So linking a workflow or linking a document maybe to an actual staff record for um, proficiency testing, for example. And we haven't designed any of this yet, so we would, we would welcome your input. Um, associating SOPs and Qualtrics with LIMS Plus requests. Um, we do have that SOP feature in LIMS where you can create e even just a list of SOPs. So perhaps in the future, linking SOPs in, in each of them to one another. Um, and then you just asked about case packets. So just, just some ideas that we've thought of. Um, and again, we don't have these yet in, in design. And then I've got some other accredi accreditation standards over here to the right. <coughs> But yes, um, integrating with the actual document component of Qualtrics. Um, I mentioned that LIMS Plus allows you to enter training records for your staff members. So you can enter annual training, um, anything that's required by human resources, uh, certifications for your individual analysts. So perhaps associating Qualtrics training records. I don't know if it makes more sense to associate the staff record or the training record itself. But these are some, just some ideas and some things that we could talk about. 